code. Okay, so this is an assignment 11 demo on hard goods um, using an underlay and applying a visual brand language to kind of quickly scaffold three different visual interpretations of an existing object with an existing set of functions. Okay, so like I mentioned, the first, the first thing I want to do is you know, put, put these different shapes and functions of this object that I've never had a chance to redesign before into my brain. And the way that I like to do that is by sketching this object and, and literally tracing this object rather than redrawing it from scratch. So um, I'm in sketchbook, I'm going to put a layer, well, let's see, I'm gonna turn the transparency of my underlay down so that I can kind of just see enough of it for me to trace and start a new layer. Um, I'm going to be using a just a regular pencil tool and I'm gonna do a scribble really quick to make sure it's kind of the right um, thickness. And yeah, I'm just gonna start by tracing out this object, trying to, to capture its basic details, basic shapes in a way that is going to let me then sketch over it. Uh, I am doing this freehand. Uh, I would, I know that there are some areas on this that are, might benefit from being, or from like using some of the guides, but I think sometimes freehanding this stuff is, is more helpful to put some of the shapes into your head and also to kind of like loosen, loosen you, loosen you up a little bit. So this thing definitely has some like interesting blends between like facets and, and curvy surfaces. There's this Ooh, I got out of hand down here on the bottom. There's this um, kind of like flat display area. It's kind of interesting. Looks like there's a, a parting line that comes to the middle here. And there's some sort of door maybe on the front here. I don't know if this panel comes off, probably. I think in sewing machines, that's that's important to be able to, to get to the inside of the machine. There's a couple areas here that look like mechanical things. I again, I don't know that that much about sewing machines, and maybe that's not super important. Um, you know, this whole assembly looks really mechanical to me and probably like something I'm not supposed to change. So I might actually copy that into all of my new designs like as, as a photo. So I'm just gonna ignore that for now. Um, there are a couple holes here. And again, kind of reveal some interesting stuff and actually oh man I hate that the zoom controls are right on top of my um can I move these oh I can awesome okay I think I will use an ellipse template for these buttons and the way this this ellipse template works is you want to align the um the axis with where you think that ellipse would extend if it were extending all the way back like to infinity. And it probably will be pretty similar to this one. Maybe this one's like a little bit more foreshortened.
Okay. You have like a button, a slot button thing going on over here. Couple other little holes. I'm not sure. These these I think are little posts where thread eventually sits, or like where the thread wraps around. So we'll include those. Not sure what this thing is. We'll include it. I think that's kind of the gist of it. Maybe for my own sake, I'll put in some like contour lines to kind of communicate what I think is going on around some of these like semi-faceted surfaces. Like this looks pretty flat, maybe slopes down like that. This one looks like it does something like this. And it, for some reason, it looks like this, uh, that's almost like an overhang. You know, this is maybe like a shadow back here. It comes around. Okay. If I like turn off my underlay, turn it on, it looks like I have most of this thing kind of like traced out. Um, I might increase the size of my pen just a little bit and go around the outside one more time just to add a little bit more weight. Like you've heard me say time and time again, um, the outline is, is an important thing on all of these sketches. Oof. Okay. Right, not so hard. You're just kind of adding some of these shapes to your head, or yeah, to your head as they're added to the page. Uh, the next thing I want to do is let's color this guy in. And I, again, this is nothing new. Um, I'm going to use a, a dream brush, which is a part of the like design set, to to color this object in. And I'm just going to pick some nice. You know what? I I could pick. Um, like the original colors here, because I'm I'm trying to learn how I might shade this thing eventually. So it looks like this is kind of the right color. Uh, I put my color on a brand new layer. Actually, for for my sake here, I'm going to call. I'm going to label my layers: line work and color blocking, color blocking, and just go ahead and fill in the color. Um, most of this object looks like it's the sort of the same blue color. It looks like my knobs are kind of white and there's some metallic areas near the where the sewing happens. So I'll, I'll kind of add those next. Uh, huh, huh, huh. Um, I usually when I'm color blocking try to get close to my lines, but I don't worry if I overshoot a little bit because I can always go through and erase around the edges. Again, here it's mostly just trying to be efficient with how you fill this stuff in. Yes, there is a fill tool. Um, I think it kind of relies on your line work to, to work and it kind of requires that you put your, your color on the same layer as your line work. And I don't really like doing that. For what it's worth, I kind of do this, do this by hand. Okay, why the dream brush? Dream brush is um, gives a really nice range of thickness as you're, you're coloring in with it. Um, that lets you get, you know, into the really small areas of your design and big areas of your design without much pen uh, pressure or adjustment in your hand. Uh, I did have to tweak the dream brush slightly so that it would um, be completely opaque. Okay, 
So next thing I'm going to do is block in some of the white. Um, normally when things are white, if I'm color blocking, I don't color them white. I color them kind of a really light gray. That way I still have some room to, to add highlights if needed. So they will look relatively white. I don't remember exactly what these were. I'm just going to color them gray. Uh, I did put my white layer on top of my blue layer, as opposed to just coloring on the same layer. Um, there's a reason for that, and maybe we'll, we'll look at that here in a second. I'm going to kind of clean up the edge here just a little bit with a nice hard eraser. Um, okay, and let's see. I mentioned, I'm gonna turn off those, um, those color layers for a second and make a copy of my underlay. And I'm gonna cut out this like mechanical portion of my sewing machine. I'm going to just like trace it out with this little lasso tool. Hit copy, control C, control V. Um, and I'm going to use that in all of my design iterations, I think, because that's probably something I want to be a part of anything, any of my concepts. Um, you might find, depending on what you're redesigning, there, there is something you want to kind of reuse, and this is a good way to do it efficiently. All right, so let's bring my color blocking back in. All right. So, and I, maybe I'll just call this like the, the sewing needle area. It's the foot. Anyone to sew as a seamster, seamstress? I think it's called the foot. Okay, I hope you guys are with me so far, um, right? Nothing really hard here. This is mostly a warm up. Trace, trace your underlay, start thinking about its geometry, color block things. Uh, now we're gonna start to do a little bit more of the thinking side of this, right? My arm is sort of warmed up at this point. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and move a, a copy of my underlay off to the side so I can see it. And um, now I'm gonna start shading this thing and I'm gonna base my shading on my reference. So I don't really have to, to think about it too much. Um, just for the sake of kind of explaining what I see, uh, I will start a new layer here, pick an obnoxious color and um, call some stuff out. So it really, it looks like one way this, the lighting is, is helping explain this concept is I have like a pretty strong top-down lighting that really helps me emphasize like these chamfered, you know, that chamfered surface and like the front of this here. So I think just a relatively straightforward top-down lighting scheme is what I want. Um, I also see kind of like a secondary highlight on this, this corner, right? Like this edge over here. So I'm gonna try and do that as well. It's kind of like there are two, two light sources maybe here that I'm seeing that would be helpful. A primary light source that's from the top, a secondary light source that kind of helps me, um, you know, get, get this angle. You guys kind of see in what I'm seeing here a little bit. Um, and that's what I'm gonna try and replicate. So there are a bunch of ways that you can shade. Um, I'm going to cover a, a new way of shading things new for us, I think, as far as like demo stuff goes. So I'm going to make a brand new layer that's on top of my color blocking, but underneath my line work. And um, I'm going to change its layer type to overlay. Each of the layers that you create in Sketchbook Pro, just like Photoshop, um, you, you can change the type of layer it is. And that, that kind of changes how the computer interprets the pixels in that layer. Uh, overlay is cool because if I use a, a 
a let's see like a a light a white if i use a white brush on an overlay layer it highlights and if i use a dark brush on an overlay layer it adds shadow in the same layer so i'm using a combination of white and dark to to shade in an overlay layer and um, let me undo both of those things really quick. The first thing I wanna do with a nice light brush is I'm just gonna get some general light and dark applied to this object, right? Light on the, the top surface here, light on kind of like the front edge of this thing, and maybe like a somewhat of a secondary highlight on some of these like left facing edges pretty much it. Uh, then I'm going to use a, a dark brush, like the same brush in a dark color, nice big soft brush, and add some low lights where I'm seeing some shadow in my reference. All right. I'm starting to communicate the volume of this object. Now, one thing that's really different between what I'm seeing in my reference and what I'm seeing here is uh, it has some like faceted edges and I want to try and, and communicate that those are nice sharp facets as well. So what I might do in another layer, that's an, an overlay layer, go back to my white brush, kind of reinforce what I already put on the page with another highlight and then in a nice hard brush, and then go through and erase away. Oops, that highlight up to my like facet line. Right, I'm gonna just like harden those edges a little bit with my overlay. Same for down here. And again, the point here isn't to get something that's photorealistic. I, I've said that lots in this class. The point is to communicate what's happening with the form, right? If there's a hard edge, it should look like a hard edge. Um, let's see, if I do something similar, I'm gonna make another overlay layer with a nice and dark brush. And I can go through, make this even bigger. and kind of erase away above this facet. Uh, where are other like important facets here? Maybe I'll do a, a little bit of one here to kind of communicate. No, I don't even really see that. Let me go back. If I add a little bit of darkness there and then erase it away. There we go. We can kind of hit that. It also seems like maybe this bottom edge. I kind of missed originally, so I'm going to go through and hit that as well. And if I go back to my line work, I think it looks like there's a line that does something like this, wraps around. Okay, again, not perfect lighting, but enough that you can kind of tell what the volume is doing on this object. Sorry about that. And it's the same approach that we're gonna take for all of the, the quick iterations that we're gonna do on top of this form, right? So it's just like, oh my goodness. Top-down lighting with a secondary light on the, the left side. I guess I one area I did not hit really quick is um, on these, 
on these knobs. So I will do that really quickly as well. And kind of use the same strategy, like add a, a little bit of the, the shadow, not worry about if it oversprays a little bit because I'm just going to erase away with an eraser tool. Okay, and in a relatively short amount of time, we have a rel like a medium fidelity sketch tracing of an existing object, right? And the perspective is correct because it was based on a photograph. We're, we're ready to start calling out some things that we wanna change in this design. So I'm going to do a little cleanup here where I'm going to like group some of my stuff together. Um, like my color blocking, basically all of the things that I did for this first concept, I'm going to put them in a folder and call this my analysis trace. Let's see, I need all of this stuff, put it in that folder, yay. And um, also, you know what, I'm gonna save really quick <laughs> because it would be awful if we completely lost this. So this is my assignment 11 hard goods demo. All right, any questions so far? I know this is, this is not that exciting because we're not doing any design work yet. It's mostly loosening up, starting to familiarize ourselves with perspective lighting, that kind of thing. Okay, just jump in if there is something. The next, the next thing I want to do with this is start calling out some of the things that I might want to keep. Some of the uh, what did I call them before? The let's just call them product product features. Or did I call them assets before? Um, so I'm going to make a brand new layer here and start writing some stuff out. Uh, when I write, when I hand letter, I like to like scale down my canvas a little bit and use a slightly thicker pencil. So these are, um, here, let, me, let me make that a little bit thicker still. Product assets. So some things that I notice about this that I'm going to want to keep in any design, any of my redesigns, uh, there's a knob. Yep, this thing needs a knob. It needs a switch. Uh, it needs this stuff. Not sure what this stuff is. Posts. There's a second knob. Or maybe these, you might even call these like a dial because they have some interesting selections that you can you can make on it. Um, so those, those seem like important things to me. Some things that I'm going to maybe want to redesign, uh, but keep as a part of whatever the new design is. Uh, this area, let's see, like this whole area here, I might describe as like a, it's like a cantilevered arm. Anyone know how to spell cantilever? <laughs> let's just call it the arm. And then there's this, this area here, which seems to me like it's a, like a flat, working surface. Uh, 
there's some interesting stuff going on here. Like these um, grooves, having seen a sewing machine before, I think there's a mechanical piece that kind of like moves up and down in these grooves as the sewing machine works. So I wanted to keep those grooves. And then of course there's the sewing machine. I'm gonna call it the foot. It might be the wrong thing to call it, but I think it's called a foot. This this part of it is a is a foot. It's it's where the needle assembly goes and all that kind of stuff. So all of those things are things that I want to make sure are part of my redesign. So I'm just calling them out so I start to understand what needs to be a part of the next version of each of my objects. Does anyone else see some other things or know something about sewing? You're like, hey, you definitely don't want to lose that thing in your redesign. This kind of seems like it might be some kind of door, like an access door. I was just gonna say that, yeah. Not sure what it does, but it, it looks like it's intentional. So let's let's keep that. And then, you know what? I'm going to, let me bring a copy of my underlay over one more time so I can kind of see um, what's going on here. That, that, this whole area, this whole area kind of looks like a, it's just an aesthetic choice. I don't know why it needs to be flat. I mean, it looks like it's kind of housing the, the dial and the switch, the reverse switch, but it doesn't, it looks mostly just like a branding opportunity to me. So um, we'll just kind of leave that. Maybe that's something that we can kind of change. Okay, so that's probably enough for me to, to understand what's at stake here. And some things that I might wanna include in my, my redesign. So how do we get to our redesign? Um, one, oh, while we're talking about this stuff, uh, this, this is about as far as you need to go for your analysis page, right? And, and again, if you wanna take a little bit of extra time to you know, render this, more nicely or to spend more time on your line work or something, that is totally up to you. Um, this, this is what I'm expecting to see though, like calling out some of the features and give us a good trace of your, of your object. Um, this is something that I'm going to want to save. So uh, I've been using a really light gray background and there we go, maybe even lighter than that. Uh, and the reason I like to use a light gray background is it allows me to make things look more white. Um, one thing that I'm noticing right now is when I turned on my light gray background, I see some like overspray or some some areas where you know I have some leftover white around some of my objects. So I might take a minute to just kind of erase some of this stuff. Um, some of our examples you saw like black, like really dark backgrounds. And I don't, I don't mind that stuff. Um, however, I, I tend to think it's a little distracting. I, I kind of, if I were to recommend a thing, I think I would recommend using a white or light gray background. Oh my goodness, where is that? There we go. Seeing some overspray over here too. Anyway, you know what, I don't, I don't need to mess around with that right now. Um, so I'm gonna save a copy of this as a PNG. And this is my analysis page. So there we go. Is And then we can move on to the next part of this assignment. So what I am going to do is and I'm just going to call that layer in my notes. Um, I'm going to turn off, actually, 
I'm going to turn off my notes or hide that layer. And um, I might actually just go ahead and like collapse some of this stuff down. Oh, uh, but that does something weird. All right, hold on. Hold on. I'm, I'm trying to decide if I want to use my sketch as the underlay or if I want to use my, um, my photo as the underlay. I, I kind of like the idea of using the sketch because it's a little simpler. But then I have to like resize it, et cetera. So you know what, that's fine. I'm gonna just turn all of those layers off, turn my underlay back on and oops, I did not mean to change its size. Uh, and then pull in some visual reference. So like I did last time, um, I used, oh, where did it go? That's not the right. I use the Zoku brand language. Um, I think I'm going to do the same thing this time, only I'm gonna pick a different Zoku product. So I, I'm just gonna grab another product here to base my design on. And I think this time I'm gonna do one of these, oh, where are they? Like one of these guys? And is there a different color? Yeah. You can do copy this image over into sketchbook. So there's one thing that I was thinking about using. And then I know that there's another product in here that has a similar kind of aesthetic. Yeah, one of these guys. And I'm gonna find the same red color here. Copy that over. Okay. So for, for those of you who, well, everyone will be using, you know, your VBL analysis, I would encourage you to kind of just like copy and paste it into your, into your working space. So you have some visual reference to work from. I'm just going to put these next to each other. And I'm not sure. Let's see if I can get them a little closer together. There we go. Okay. So this is my reference. This is my underlay. I'm going to turn my underlay down and start trying to make some decisions. Now, it would also be helpful if you have another monitor or an iPad or something, some place for you to put that, that image. And I wonder if I can just open it up really quick um, of your analysis. So you can refer to it here. I'm gonna put it in a different window. I'm gonna keep this up somewhere where I can see it. So I know what, what things I want to try and incorporate. Um, but let's start sketching out some new, some new forms. And I'm going to duplicate a couple things that I know I'm going to use. Um, like my sewing needle. Okay, I'm going to make a new layer and start thinking about what would be a cool way to redesign this thing. Um, okay, so a couple things that I'm thinking, uh, let's see. Both of these concepts, these Zoku concepts, have sort of like an inside and an outside. There's like an inner, an inner section and an outer section. And uh, there's actually something cool going on with this bottle where there's like a bottom piece, a top piece, and this like bubbly inside piece. Uh, so I'm kind of thinking maybe I take a similar approach with, um, with this like main arm area. Like there, maybe there's something inside here that would be cool to see 
that you don't normally get to see, you know, maybe some mechanical stuff, or maybe, maybe what I'll do is just do that in this area here. So maybe I'll take this area and apply it here. Um, let's see. I think I have some like long kind of like stripey details on a stripey long surface that might be easily applied to this section here. Something like that. Uh, and then like tying these two areas together. Well, both of these products have like a pretty strong break between materials on their shape. Like there's a strong break here, there's a strong break here. Maybe I can do some sort of really strong break here in my product and like keep this relatively simple, something like that. And then there's this like transitional area. All right, and I'm just kind of thinking out loud how I might apply the design because I, I don't know when I first start what, what might transpire. Um, I'm kind of thinking you know, maybe there's this like transitional material in between the two, kind of like this metal. You know, the metal could be applied here. That might be kind of interesting. And you know what? On, I know on the top of each of these, there's like a offset shape thing going on. Like maybe that's something I can do on the front here. I can have some sort of like cool offset, something like this capping everything off. Okay, this is not a sketch that I'm gonna to present to anyone, but there's some thinking happening here that is helpful for me. And I'm trying to talk through it a little bit with you guys so you can kind of see how the thinking side of design isn't always pretty. Sometimes you gotta think out loud a little bit first. I'm gonna just take that whole layer, set it aside. Oh, actually, you know what? I'm not gonna do that. I'm going to turn it way down and transparency. It's still there, just kind of as a reference. And now I'm going to start actually sketching. So one thing I thought was could be interesting is keeping a really kind of like bubbly back end to this, this design. And maybe even like the overall shape to this thing stays kind of bubbly like that. Uh, but at some point, there will be a material break. And I was kind of thinking the material break could do something like this. Uh, and as I'm drawing these lines, I'm using my underlay to help me figure out what the perspective of these lines actually is. Um, now, there is sort of like a parting line that I could add here that might be helpful to communicate like what's actually happening. With this material. And I think this is going to stay a relatively simple also. Okay, I was talking about maybe like chopping the, the front of this shape off kind of like this and having like an inset area. So actually I'm going to do a little trick here where I, I make the shape that I think I'd like. I'm just going to rough it in here on one layer and then duplicate the layer and, and kind of use that same shape a second time. So I can kind of think about, is that kind of what I want? Kind of an inset like that? That, that is kind of cool. Um, maybe I actually do something like this too. So there's kind of like an edge, a thickness to it. Um, all three of those things I might turn way down. You know what, we'll, we'll leave them like that for now. That's fine, okay. Uh, another kind of like fun trick, I suppose, in Sketchbook is any layer that you sketch, you can kind of warp and change as, 
as you like. So you can kind of like, I'm, I'm moving this ever so slightly. Let's see. Um, so I'm kind of thinking there's like a, a bubble thing going on here where you actually see like the inside of the sewing machine a little bit. I'm not sure if that would be really interesting or not, but um, maybe it would be. And there might be kind of like a shadow that kind of hides what's going on back in here. Let's see. Okay, so the, the front part of this design, you know, I kind of want to have it terminate or end in a way that's kind of similar to up here. I kind of want these to be the same in, in a way. So uh, actually what I'll do is copy that shape and paste it and kind of do a similar treatment. We can kind of see it does something like this. And you know what, maybe, maybe this bottom also has some sort of like bubble thing going on. Oops. Like maybe both of these have some, some sort of like cool bubble thing happening. I'm not sure if it's just an aesthetic thing, but at this point, that's all that I really care about. Let's see. Okay, so I know that there were a couple surfaces here that were like metal. So I'm gonna try and make sure I have those surfaces in my design, even if the shape is a little bit different. Um, I know that there needs to be a switch, but I'm gonna change the kind of like the size of the switch on this side. Like maybe for this one, I'm thinking, the switch is a big one. You know, I kind of like the slot shape of that switch. So I'm gonna keep the same function, but I kind of like the idea of it being like an even bigger version of that same switch. Let's see. Uh, I've got a couple knobs that I need to include. So, you know what, maybe instead of a knob, well, hold on, before I do the knobs, I know that I have these like slot things that I need to include for the needle to go up and down. And this one looks like it even wraps like all the way around down here. You know what, I'm gonna try something with these knobs, maybe instead of knobs. And I don't know if this is totally kosher or not, but it's this is just a design concept. So I think I'm going to change the knob to a, a different way of selecting something. I'm gonna do like a big, oops, I'm gonna do a big, like selector switch thing that has multiple stops. That way it kind of matches the style of the other switch, a slide, that's the word that I'm looking for. Something like that. And there, there might have to be like indications on the side here as to like what, what this thing actually means. You know, maybe it even has something like that going on. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this one. The uh, sewing machine people might take one look at this concept and say that would never work, but they don't know until they see it, I suppose. 
So I'm going to do something similar on this one too. Why not? And you can kind of tell that I'm drawing on top of a lot of the lines that I already have in place. And, and that's, that's okay. Okay, so I have a concept kind of roughed out. You know, I missed, I missed something over here. Um, I need a spot for all of these posts to land. And you know what, maybe what I'll do is like, make sort of like a landing area that sort of sits on top of this thing, kind of like that. Erase, erase what's going on behind here a little bit. Uh, and I guess I'm getting that from kind of how the top of this thing has this like stair steppy thing going on. Do something like that. And maybe I'll I'll kind of match it match what I did over there, over here as well. It'll be another little area that like stands off, and gives me space to put this other, whatever it's supposed to do, this other standoff thing. Okay. Now you can tell probably if you're still with me anyway that I'm I'm taking a lot of guesses and I'm you know changing changing things based on aesthetically what I think they're doing even though I'm I don't really know what all of these buttons do on a um, sewing machine and the reason that's okay at this point is because we're we're trying to design an aesthetic variation on something that exists and even if I get this wrong, like, like let's say this, this switch slide thing has to be round. It has to be round, or maybe the company has never done it in any, any way other than round. Showing this option in theory might spark some sort of idea about how this could happen differently in the future. Okay, oh, and I forgot there's, there's some sort of door. So you know what, um, maybe, I'm thinking like this thing is actually the door now and I just need a, some sort of a like button thing that can be pressed that like allows this thing to open. Okay, so this is my rough sketch of my new design, right? I've tried to include some things that, that relate to elements and, and VBL principles, if I could say elements and principles um, from my existing Zoku stuff and incorporate them into this, uh, this sewing machine. And I'm just trying to connect a couple things down here to this like strange bubble area. Like that. Okay. Um, so there are a couple options for what I might do next. I could take another 10 minutes and like clean up this line work, right? I this, these are still kind of like thinking sketches. They're they're still kind of loose, still a little bit messy. Um, but maybe what I'll do just to go with it here is um, start the next step anyway and see if we can kind of incorporate this like loose sketching style into what we, we know is the next step, which is kind of like doing some color blocking stuff. Um, so why don't we go ahead and do that? Why not? Uh, I am going to add a couple maybe like little contour lines to help communicate what these surfaces are doing. Uh, let's see, I, I guess these contours on the front here are pretty helpful. 
I might have like a little contour here that kind of shows what this is doing. Again, just to kind of communicate my intentions a little bit. Uh, another thing I might do with this like clear plastic area, I'm going to add some lines to indicate that it also has some thickness. Um, another little trick, you can put little, like basically this shape in the areas where materials come together to kind of show that it's two pieces that have a like meeting a uh, like a parting line. It's not a parting line. A a um, what what am I trying to say? A place where two components come together. <laughs> There's usually a little beauty gap or something that that happens where two two pieces of plastic come together like that. So I'm going to go around and kind of add some of those details really quick, just to make this read a little bit more clearly. Okay, and we're gonna go with this kind of like loose sketch as our as our underlay. I am gonna turn off this like really, really loose sketch from earlier where I was kind of figuring out what parts of my VBL get applied to what parts of my, um, what do you call it? Sewing machine, I am gonna save really quick. Uh, okay, so I am gonna move into some color blocking and shading just to, to get to that part of this exercise. Um, one thing that I would expect probably you would do, concept A, is that you might actually continue working on uh, other versions of this design until you get three or four that you really like, right? Uh, in in the last demo I did for this class too, I, I did other versions of this as well before I went to color blocking. You know what, why don't I just put it to, to you guys who are watching this at the moment. Would you like to see another variation of a Zoku um, machine, sewing machine, before I go into like some of the, the rendering coloring stuff to communicate some color material and finish choices? Um, I kind of would, but like, are you like, were you planning on doing another one? Because I kind of just want to see like, how you're iterating those ideas. Okay, yeah, let's let's do it. Uh, honestly, um, Haley, I was planning on doing doing a couple more, but if it's, yeah, okay. So if it's helpful, let's just go ahead and do it. Uh, so what I will do, like I said before, is I'm gonna take this concept, shrink it down, move it over here as a reference point and start a brand new one. So what's another another way that we could do this this sewing machine. So it looks like Zoku, but applies the theory differently. Um, and I don't have one at the top of my head. So let's, let's think about it. Uh, I kind of see something else going on with this, this guy. And one thing I see is that there's like a lid on top, a removable area, like a strong metallic band. And then this like highly colored area. Right, and I know there's probably a functional purpose for that. Well, I know there is a functional purpose for that, but I'm going to take it as an aesthetic cue instead. Um, you guys probably remember some of the um, KitchenAid stuff. I can't remember if that was your your group or not, but KitchenAid is another brand that has like a strong metallic band that goes through its stuff. Let's let's go with this. So, let's say I want like a strong metallic band to go through the center of my product for some reason. I think it would be a cool design element. Um, and then maybe, so I'm thinking like there's a strong metallic band and then there's like this secondary thing that sits on top that has a spot for my, whatever, whatever all these like little pillars are. Right? I've got like a spot on top here where all of my spool, thread spool things go. 
right? It's kind of like a two-tiered thing. This thing, this Zoku bottle, if I zoomed in here, it kind of has like this stair step thing going on, right? The metal band, this like white plastic area, and then the colored area. I'm gonna try and do that on this because I think it's kind of cool. Um, maybe this at the bottom gets cut off also. And again, this is like my thinking sketch. It doesn't look the way that I want it to look yet. I'm just trying to think out loud about how I might translate some of these elements. Um, let's see. So I've got like metal band, white thing on the top. The rest of this is going to be red. And I kind of like the tapered nature of the Zoku, right? This whole thing kind of tapers down. So I'm going to try and mimic that shape on, on this as well. I'm going to keep that tapered shape. And you know what? The, the top of this surface here, maybe I'll try and have sort of like a defined shape that allows me to kind of like, you know what? Actually, maybe this also has that like metal band that goes around, something like this. That could be kind of cool. This one's metal, this one's metal or at least me me metallic. And maybe it allows me to make this entire surface kind of like the metal surface that we see in the underlay as like a much smaller area. Maybe that even allows me to kind of increase its, you know, it, it looks more high end for, for that reason. I don't know, that, that can be kind of cool. I still kind of like the idea of um, this being kind of like a, inside, outside, like two layer thing. So maybe I still keep that like two layer thing going on in the bottom of this, this concept. Um, and then there's gonna be like stripes in this area that's cool. <laughs> kind of gives it a like an old school art deco look maybe. Sewing's kind of old school, sure. Um, what else? Oh, you know, I didn't even touch on brand. We'll do that when we start coloring stuff in the other one. Oh, I need that access door. So in this case, maybe the access door uh, kind of like comes up from the bottom and, and follows two of these lines. Uh, you know what, I don't like that. I'm gonna undo a little bit here. I'm trying to think of like how an access door might look. Or maybe this whole thing flips up. Or maybe, let's see, I have these lines that kind of come across. You know, maybe there's a button here. So I'll use kind of a similar method. A button here that can be pressed. It's got some little detents to indicate that that actually opens like the entire, the entire bottom of this thing. This entire thing is a door. That could kind of work. I, I think that's closer to how the original looks too. Um, let's see, so we've got a couple other things that I'm gonna need to integrate. Um, most notably like the switch and stuff, but maybe I'll do that Maybe I'll do that after I kind of refine this a little. So that was relatively quick, right? Three, four, five minutes to kind of think through what the next version of this thing might look like. At this point, it's probably far enough for you to say, nope, this isn't working at all. Or, you know what? I think there's something here. Let's keep moving, right? If you, if you don't get to a point where you're like, you know what? There's something kind of cool about this. I'm going to keep going. Stop. Do another version. Um, I think there's something kind of cool going on here. I, I, I can start to see it a little bit. So I'm, I'm going to keep going. So what I'll do, like I did before, is turn down my like original sketch a little bit, turn down the opacity, that is. I'm going to save really quick. And then start sketching out the, like, the next version. So. Um, 
I still have my underlay and I also have my, my like sketch underlay from, from what I just drew. And I'm gonna try and be kind of loose with my lines and just sort of feel out where, where these shapes, where these shapes are going. Oh, perspective was really weird there. So I'm going to try again. Here we go. That's a little better. Uh, I also think that this line really needs to hit. So you know what? All right, so there's my like metal band. And I'm kind of thinking like this entire surface, there's like an inside to this too, where my, whatever this post is kind of sits and where these posts sit. And I'm not super worried about redesigning these posts at this point, mostly because I'm not entirely sure what they do, but as long as they're in here as placeholders, I think it'll be okay, I think. <laughs> um, okay, so maybe for this design, uh, let's see, let, let me get some of the rest of this drawn too. Oof, that was bad. I'm gonna try again here. Make it a little thicker. And kind of like show how this kind of goes down and around. Man, that that is a little tricky. Something like that. You know, and a contour might help. Maybe it's actually like that. Okay. And I'll just leave that whole thing. All right, I'm adding just a couple contours to make it seem, make it read the way I, I kind of want it to. Uh, all right, maybe I'll get a contour on the top here. Kind of goes down to show what that looks like. I might do one across the front here. So this kind of wraps around, goes in, jumps out, goes across and back out. Again, I'm just trying to define some of this stuff. Okay, so there are a couple features that I'm totally missing at, at this point. Um, and I'm kind of curious about what I could do with them. I kind of want to do, you know what? Maybe this, this knob that was on the front here, I'm going to move. Maybe for this concept, I'm going to put that knob. Oh no, I got a cool idea. I'm going to put that knob underneath here. 
And you know what? I might even cheat and use an, an ellipse template a little bit for this. So here, let me let me see if I can communicate what what I'm thinking. Uh, I'm thinking that it would be cool if that knob was actually like something like this that had its own little tick marks and you actually rotated like the whole thing. That could be cool. No idea if that would work, but um, I kind of like how it matches up with the bottom here. And it kind of is another translation of this thing. Like maybe it's white and maybe there's like a metal ring going across. That would be kind of cool. And it leaves me a little more room to have uh, those, those slots come up. Something like this. Maybe it would totally present a mechanical problem, but again, at this point, I, I'm only interested in uh, like my aesthetic variations here. So, um, and maybe because I have such strong lines, I, I will like erase those right here. Okay. Um, I still need a couple other features for like my buttons, on, or I guess like my switch and my knob on this side. Uh, I kind of like the idea of having, let's see, if this is has sort of like an inside and an outside going on, maybe what's on the inside comes to the outside. Yeah, that would be kind of cool. So maybe what we do is we have sort of a Zoku shaped slot that actually like jumps through the plastic. Right, it actually like comes out like this. That would be kind of cool. I mean, your your word might not be cool, <laughs> but what one thing I'm constantly kind of asking myself as I'm drawing things is like, would it be cool if and and yeah, yeah, that looks cool or no, that doesn't look cool at all. And I think what I mean there, if I'm trying to unpack my own words, is um, is there a fit between what I'm drawing and the reference that I'm drawing from? You know, is it interesting? Is the shape that I'm drawing somehow interesting or related to what I'm trying to do or not? Alex, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Was was there a thing someone was trying to say? Oh, sorry, no. I guess I um, accidentally turned on my mute button. Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, it's fine. Um, all right, so I'll, I'll add my knob in here and I'll cheat a little bit again with my ellipse tool for this one. Um, so that contour actually jumps out and across this guy. And then I, you know, I kind of want to just stick with a slot shape again for the, uh, the switch. But I am changing the proportion of where this thing lives a little bit. And I kind of gave them more of a landing area. Okay, so there's my, my next concept. And I think I've covered most of the things that I said I wanted to include here. Um, I can always look back at my sheet. Yep, I got my switch. I have a dial. I have some sort of adjuster, some of these things. Um, yes, I've, I guess I have kept the overall geometry with like this hanging cantilevered arm and a flat workspace, the access door. Um, okay, so now that I have my line work, and I'm going to turn off this like weird 
thinking version like I did before. I have concept B. Um, you, I'm, I'm sure you guys could would understand my, my process for concept C would be relatively similar, right? Um, so I'm going to not do that So in the interest of getting, getting into some coloring stuff. So let me turn off my underlay. I am going to keep my Zoku stuff up for now, but I might make it a little bit smaller. Move it more up in the corner. And I'm going to take both of my concept sketches and I'm going to lay them out on the page the way that I want them to be on the page. And because this, this version, I only have two, I'm just going to leave these a little bit larger. And I might move B ever so slightly. Uh -huh. you know what? I might try and do a little tweak to its perspective. There we go. OK, so I've got my two rough, or not rough, um, my two sketches, right? My two design intents and my sort of my last step here, one of my, one of my last steps here is to uh, do my color blocking and start to communicate that portion of my design as well. I want to add the brand here and, um, and then eventually add in this thing, right? My, my sewing machine needle to, to both concepts. So um, I'm going to actually combine my line work together and just call this layer line work. I'm going to save and get to color blocking. So one color that is really important is this, um, you know what, maybe I'll start with the metal because there's not a ton of it. I'll pick kind of like this middle gray, go back to my um, dream brush and then paint in where I thought that was going to go. So that will be here on this concept. And I was thinking this might be metal also. I think probably another thing that's important to, to mention about this, this assignment uh, is what, what we're doing right now is sort of like an initial aesthetic design pass at an existing object using a VBL. And this is something that happens all the time in a design consultancy setting where, hey, this company came to us, they want to design a new product they don't already make, and they have existing rules about how things look. Let's see a bunch of options, right? So this would be kind of the first pass at that. After this, we would put, you know, maybe there's three or four designers doing the same thing, brainstorming concepts. We'd put them all up on the wall. And our goal would be to pick one, two, or maybe three directions to look into further, right? So this, the point of this exercise and the point of doing some like loose color blocking and, a, and like a wide range of versions of applications of, of this visual brand language at a medium to high fidelity level is so that we're communicating a, a wide range of design intent here, um, which includes colors, materials, finishes to match the VBL that we're applying. Okay, I don't know if I was thinking metal was going to be a part of this concept other than maybe just this, this area here. So we'll go ahead and add, add that. Okay, next I'm going to do um, my like white layer. I made it a, a, for each color. I like to make a brand new layer in sketchbook. That way, if I need to change the color of everything on an entire layer, I can. Um, also, it lets me not worry about as much of the erasing because I'm literally like covering up the, the color that happens underneath this white layer, for example. I might zoom in just a little bit here. There we go. Now that I'm looking at this, you know what, maybe I will do like a white 
end to this design on the top and the bottom, because I think that could be kind of cool. I do think these buttons are gonna be white. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that right now. So it'll provide a nice like contrast to the touch points. Um, these ones, you know, I'm kind of thinking, all right, what am I thinking over here? I'm kind of thinking that the, there's an inside and an outside to this product. I'm thinking the inside of this thing is, is what's white. The outside is kind of like a clear and red material. So I think what that means is that, oops, not black. I'm gonna color like the, all of the inside of this thing, my white color, like this. This is probably also white down here. Okay. Um, all right, so to be clear about what I think I'm doing here, I think this treatment I'm gonna do here. And this treatment I'm gonna do here. <laughs> That's a really weird arrow. I'm gonna do that here. All right, other, let's see, some other color stuff that needs to happen. I think I'm gonna do um, this like bright red rope colors as a touch point. I'm gonna do that for my buttons on this one. And my, my dial and my slide, those are gonna be bright red. Or some contrast on top of like the white area that they're sitting on top of. You know, and that kind of makes me feel like this style should be red also. I want, maybe I want all of my touch points to kind of be the same. So this should be red like that. Um, let's see. Oh, you know what? Maybe I, now I'm kind of remembering some of the original design intent over here. I, I'm kind of thinking there was this metal band that kind of cut through this entire design here. So let's, let's stick with that for now. This whole thing has a split through it. Yeah, I think I'm okay with that. All right. So I'm hoping you guys are still with me. I'm gonna keep coloring here for a little while longer to kind of get to some of the um, this like transparency effect stuff that's happening. Oops. 
All right, so we've got this transparent thing on top. Let's try this again. I have a quick question while you're coloring. Yes, please. Um, so for the um, the two objects that we choose um, to apply our VBLs to, um, they don't need to have, they can be somewhat generic, correct? Like we're basically just choosing the form. Like yeah. it doesn't need to be a specific brand of backpack or nope. whatever you decide to Absolutely. Right. Like just, just like when I picked this sewing machine, I, I was not thinking about the brand that, you know, my underlay came from. I'm mostly thinking about for my underlay, uh, finding something that is well lit, something that has a perspective that I think would, would be fun to draw on top of and maybe more than fun, uh, gives me the right, you know, the right perspective and angles to draw on top of, it gives me enough strong geometry to, to actually change. Gotcha, thank you. Yeah, proportions, proportions are important for that selection too, I think. Okay. All right, how do we make this look transparent? We do something like this. Boom. Okay, let's see. We need, I think the inside, okay, I see what's going on now. So the inside of this, I was thinking is bright red. Actually, it, it extends into here. The uh, probably if it's if it's not implied, I suppose the the hardest part of this assignment is the um, isn't the coloring or the rendering. Although some of you. Um, maybe need or want to try some new techniques or improve your techniques there. So it will take a little bit of time for you to color, to render. Uh, the hardest part of this assignment is the thinking, how, how are you applying the VBL to your, to your new shape, right? What, what is helpful about thinking about the line work and then doing color is you separate those two things in your brain. The first thing that you're thinking about is uh, like shapes and proportions until you get some sort of direction for your design. The second thing you're thinking about is, is your color and material break breakdown or break up. <clears throat> All right, so one thing that's going to make, let's see, my this stuff look transparent is like coloring in sort of the edge area. Because this material, from my reference, I kind of learned that the, the material is darker around the edges than it is where it appears most transparent. So I'm going to go ahead and 
kind of color in the, the edges of this thing. There we go. I'm going to change the, the layer type to, oops, that's not the right layer. This one, change it to multiply and then reduce its transparency a little bit. And apparently I did, I did a bad thing. Hold on, what happened here? I put some of my color on the wrong layer. There we go. All right, I think you guys can probably see how this stuff is coming together. Um, and I, like I said, I'm just going to keep going here for a little while longer. Now, I know in this demo, I kind of jumped right into using my underlay to do a really, really quick rough sketch, uh, thinking about how I might apply the VBL to this new form. And then I kind of quickly moved into um, how, I guess, my more refined line work for for those of you, like, let's say you start doing it, you 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 can't find anything that you're liking, right? Every everything that you're drawing in this digital space is just not not doing it for you. If that ends up being the case for you, my advice would be to get out of the digital tool and do a little bit of thumbnailing, right? Do a little bit more of the thumbnailing, thinking on paper at a smaller scale, because generally that makes a big difference. <laughs> Uh, and and I don't always think super well in in the digital space, but I mo most of the time think best on on like physical paper. So just because I'm asking for digital deliverables and I'm not asking you to do any thumbnails um, doesn't mean that's that's not something you should should ignore or or not consider at all. Uh, because I think for a lot of you, it, it probably is still a really helpful thing. Okay, these 
elements up at the top, these like little posts for where the thread might go. I'm leaving them kind of a neutral gray because again, I'm not entirely sure what, what they're supposed to be for. I know they're, they're not really designed elements, so I don't want to call any like needless attention to them. Um, so I am, I'm going to leave them in there, but kind of muted, you know, under understated. Okay, so these are my two design directions. And uh, the next step for me is going to be getting into some shading. Um, and then I think some last details will include some, some branding stuff. So like, like I did before, um, what I'm, I think I'm going to do actually is make a folder, call it my color blocking and like take all of these layers that I was coloring in and add them to this folder, close the folder, save everything really quickly. I at least have, you know, that much, that much done. I'm going to make a brand new layer change it to my um, overlay type again. And now I'm going to start to do some, some shading. And uh, for this one, I think I'm going to try the same sort of process. We'll start with a, like a nice big soft brush that is a dark color. And I'm going to add some shadow to both of my concepts where I, I guess to just start building out some of the, the volume that needs to be communicated here. And it will be kind of similar for, for both concepts. So I'm going to kind of shade in the same areas for both of them at the same time. I have a question. Yeah, ask away. Um, how are you doing it so that when you're shading, it, like the like the airbrush part doesn't go outside of like the lines and stuff? Oh, yeah, that's a good question. Um, it does, but because an overlay layer um, only darkens pixels that have some sort of value, it will not, like if I draw with my black here, I'll, on a regular layer, if I draw, right, it will, it will cover white. On my overlay layer, nothing happens. Even, uh, even though it's, it's definitely there, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't multiply, it doesn't like darken any white pixels. And yeah, I hope that answers your question. If I change my layer type back to normal, you can see just how much overspray there actually is. <laughs> it's kind of the, the magic of an overlay layer. Uh, okay. Where, where that becomes problematic is uh, when you do like a background color, um, that's all stuff that might darken the background. Another reason I like to use white <laughs> as a background color. Um, another thing, though, that, that can be problematic with that is because overlay doesn't do a great job of darkening light colors, you might find yourself having to make a new layer that's a like a multiply layer uh, to do additional shading on your like, uh, I, I guess, like lighter, lighter colors. Now, I don't like to do all of my shading with a big, fuzzy, soft brush because then things start to look really cushy and, and cartoony and, and soft, and that's not always the case. Uh, and not, that's not always what you want to have happen. Um, I do like to start with a big, cushy brush because it allows me to get some of those big volume, uh, like the volumetric shading done. I can always go back in with a uh, like a harder, a harder edged uh, tool. Like, uh, what is this one called? This is just the generic marker tool, and and add additional shadows or or highlights. So in this case, you know, like in this chiseled area, that should probably be darker, right? So I'm going to go back in and and add some darkness to some of these some of these areas. where there would be shadow. And even those, this thing was a little too big. There we go. There's probably
probably a kind of like a cast shadow. Underneath this thing it might actually be even a little bit darker. Do something like this. Um, once again, I'll point out the, the, the point here is just so that we can have a conversation about which of these concepts is the most successful translation or the one that makes the most sense to move forward with in applying this brand language. I don't want you guys to spend hours and hours and hours rendering these things out. Uh, so a question that um, I addressed last time was, okay, how do I know when I'm done? You know, when, when, <laughs> when can I be done? With, with the shading. And my answer to you is probably before you start this phase of your project, give yourself a time limit, an hour maybe, like after you have your line work done and it's time to color all three concepts, give yourself an hour and try to have like 15 minute check-in points. Like, hey, after 15 minutes, have I color blocked everything? If not, you know, try and finish that up in the next 15 minutes. Uh, within the next 15 minutes, how much you know basic shading can I do across all three concepts? And just try to work on all three of your concepts, bring them all to a similar level of fidelity at the same time. And when your hour is over, stop. You know, it's your chance to take a step back and say, you know what? Can I have the conversation I need to have about these three concepts with the level that I've I've achieved? And the answer is probably going to be yes, right? Now, if you're someone who has a ton of time or you want to spend a ton of time rendering these and make them look, you know, just like really push the fidelity, that is totally fine if you want to practice, but that's not necessary, I don't think, for this, for this level of concept where, again, the, the type of conversation we're trying to have is about, um, you know, does the concept successfully translate the, the visual brand language? So I hope that is a like a helpful, it ends up being like a helpful bench benchmark for you as, as you're doing this. So I'm adding a couple a couple highlights to like the, the tops of my my surfaces because remember I have that like top down lighting um, and I'm trying to hit all of this the, the same types of surfaces at the same time uh, so that I don't like miss any across my design here like this bottom edge should probably be pretty light uh, on the other hand like this top edge probably should be pretty dark on both of these concepts. Probably darker around this corner, probably darker right there. Um, it's probably good. Okay, so that's, oh, I wanted to do some branding. Um, I am gonna do one other quick thing here. Uh, I'm gonna make a new layer that is a, screen, I think a lightened layer would also work pretty well um, with a white marker. Let me save really quick. And I'm going to add some highlights to make certain parts of this object look shiny. Right now, everything is rendered. So it's kind of a matte finish, right? 
it's not super shiny. It's not really textured. It's just kind of a matte finish. Um, and some of my reference is, is really shiny, particularly, um, I think, let's see, like, let's do a color like this. Like, this stuff is shiny. Like, this should be shiny. This entire, you know, piece should be kind of shiny. And I think this piece, too, I want that to be, like, shiny shiny plastic, not, not like a satin finish. So um, let's, let's do some quick highlights to, to, make that, to make that happen. So I'm gonna make a screen layer, use a big <clears throat> um, like soft brush and add like a really bright highlight and then go back with a really big hard eraser and erase away to kind of make it a little bit more crisp, to make that highlight crisp. And actually, now that I'm seeing it, I don't think it's crisp enough. So let me, I'm gonna actually do that again. I'm gonna use my same bright highlight, use a slightly smaller, hard eraser and erase away just enough of this thing so that it looks like a hard highlight on the surface of my object. Um, now the highlight naturally would break in this like trough, this, this little crevice area. And it also naturally would mask any colors that are underneath it. So I'm doing this highlight on top of everything else. Uh, I think that kind of works. So I'm going to do a similar kind of highlight on uh, and remember, I have like top down light, and I also have light kind of coming from the left side. That might be the only highlight I need to communicate, hey, that thing is shiny, right? That, that's probably all I need. To make it photorealistic, there might be a secondary highlight that I add, and I would probably I'd add that kind of like as light that's bouncing around the bottom of this thing. Um, but again, we, we, don't, we don't need to push it that far. It's just enough to say, like, hey, this is a shiny thing. So um, let's do highlights on this kind of the same way. I think probably there would be a highlight here. There'd probably be a highlight here. And probably a highlight here as well. And all three of those highlights would be they would have hard edges because shiny surfaces reflect um, they reflect stuff in the room with hard edges as opposed to soft, soft edges. So I'm going to do kind of the same thing for these where I Okay, again, it's not super fancy, but it's enough so that it looks like, hey, these surfaces are, are shiny surfaces as opposed to um, just like matte, matte finish surfaces. Uh, and, and like I mentioned before, if you wanted to go the next step um, and do like a secondary highlight, that is also fine. Remember that uh, like generally, there's light that bounces off of the surfaces of tables. So you, you could do a slight highlight like on the bottom edge of this thing. Actually, I don't think it's communicating that well, so I'll just leave it off. Uh, other things that I might do on, on like shiny objects is add highlights to like the top edges of those surfaces.
like this. And you can even add like little hot spots where the light would be hitting it most directly. You might even see a little bit coming around the back here. And, you know, maybe I'll do something like that on this one too. Okay, um, brand stuff. So there are a couple ways that Zoku applies its brand things. Um, it looks like for the most part, there are a couple of ways that I could put it. Um, one way they apply their brand is as a, like an, an embossed set of squares. So I might actually just kind of fake in four squares that are kind of embossed on this surface here to indicate where that brand would be. It's a suggestion of how the brand is applied without literally, you know, like putting the logo on there. They also tend to use this like white screen print logo on top of a transparent surface. And that's another cool thing to do. Um, you can do by hand. And I'm trying to think like, it, I think it would look really cool kind of on the side of this, this object here. kind of wrapping around like that. That's a cool place for a brand. Um, maybe on this one, it's right here, front and center. Um, I am leaving the brand kind of sketchy because this is a sketch, just enough to indicate it. Uh, a couple last details you might think about adding. Um, I guess I kind of had it in some of the sketches, but if you wanted to add some like dial, go back through to your line work layer uh, and add some of the uh, like dial indicators, like again, I'm not sure entirely what all of these are, it's like selecting the stitch type. It's, it's not a bad deal, detail to include, or maybe you include the fact that there are multiple speeds or something that this thing can run. Although I think that's something that's controlled by the pedal, but whatever. Oh, and the final thing um, is this sewing needle. So I wanna like make a copy of this. Uh-oh, where'd it go? Come here. and bring this up and show it. Okay, so I have a sewing needle that I think I want to be a part of each one of these. So I'm going to, and it looks really dark, so I might actually adjust this, um, this layer and brighten it up a little bit and see if that helps. Okay. And I'm gonna like make a copy of it and move this one over here like this. And then use my eraser tool to just get rid of any of the parts that you wouldn't be able to see. And actually, because that's transparent, I think you can see most of it. On this one, you wouldn't see any of this. Cool. Okay, and there's my, my two concepts. I think, all right, so last thing that I might wanna do here, and let me zoom, oops, I did not zoom out. Let me undo that. I want to like turn off any of the stuff that I don't wanna see. Um, maybe I put all of this stuff into a like concepts. Oh my gosh, I was off on my keyboard concepts folder. I don't know why sometimes it like hides the line work. 
Uh, and I'm, I'm going to just drop all of this stuff in here. There we go. Um, now's a good time to like rearrange things on the page if you really if you really want to. Um, I think you can actually like flatten your layers and make a like everything in a single set of layers. The problem there is sometimes you're like multiply and overlay stuff compounds in a in an unpredictable way. It's not actually what you want. So I figured I'd show you just to see that that's a thing that you, you can do. Uh, if you want to do a vignette or something behind your object, that is totally fine. Um, here's how I usually do vignettes. I If you hold shift in sketchbook, you get a straight line. And I like to vignette so that, oh, geez. Sorry, it thinks I want to use sticky keys. Okay, hopefully that turns that off. Um, actually, I'm gonna undo this. So if you imagine that these things are sitting on a table, right, right, um, and bear with me here, like underneath this would probably look something like this, right? Like it would, it would be sitting on a table with a shadow that looks kind of like that. You want your vignette to, to end behind where that table would end. Right. If you end your vignette down here, it it will look like your objects are like floating in in space in a really strange way. Um, but if you end your vignette here, and I'll, I guess maybe I'll just do two so you can kind of see. If I end my vignette here, these things look like they're floating in space, like they're hanging off a table. It doesn't look right. But if I end my vignette here it feels a little bit more like they're sitting on a table. And if I end it even a little bit higher up, now it looks like they're, they're more anchored in space. In this one, I might even get away with something like this. That actually kind of looks nice. Um, you can play around with it a little bit. Yeah, that works. And a vignette is an easy way to, to hit someone over the head and say, hey, look, these are two concepts for the same thing. <laughs> or these two things belong together. They should be looked at at the same time and commented on. Um, I think that's pretty much all I wanted to cover for today. So uh, I, oh, you will want to probably make some sort of label for this. Like these are my Zoku, sewing machines. And I know some of you have done a really awesome job of you know, making what you write on the page really thoughtful. You'll include a logo or you'll kind of like design what you're writing on the page. Like all of those details go a long way in your comp compositions. But at the very least, please just title your page. And as always, you know, like this is Will Nickley and this is assignment 11, right? That, that's also important. Are there any questions?
Okay, then I think that's where I will at least end the demo for today. Uh, so let me stop the recording.